I'm Lauren Turner Dunn. And I'm Miles Spencer. Authorities in San Bernardino are searching for a man who shot and wounded a San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputy. The deputy was taken to the hospital, but was later released in good condition. The bullet hit his body armor. The shooting occurred earlier this morning and after the man tried to rob a Hesperia gas station. Authorities have released the image of the suspect and they say he was driving a four-door black sedan. A man has turned himself into Los Angeles police in connection with the hit and run that killed a five-year-old boy in Florence two days ago. 19 year old Homer Watford struck the boy, but only turned himself in when surveillance tape was discovered. The boy was involved in a fatal car accident was Ronald O'Neill Jr. O'Neill would have turned six in May. Police in Koreatown have arrested a man for attacking a woman with a hammer. Police say the attack happened after a Korean man asked the woman if she was Korean. When she responded yes, he started hitting her with a hammer. The 24-year-old woman was rushed to the hospital with multiple injuries, but later was released. A federal judge in Maryland has blocked part of President Trump's executive travel ban. Trump signed the order that would have barred citizens in six Muslim countries from entering the U.S. Activists demonstrate outside the White House protesting the ban. Trump's ban now has been blocked by federal judges in Maryland and Hawaii. The White House says they will appeal the rulings. A North Korean diplomat has denounced the U.S. deployment of the anti-missile system in South Korea. The diplomat said in China that the deployment raises tensions. That is not only deployed against North Korea, its aim is to contain North Korea, China and Russia. Obviously, THAAD will severely destroy the strategic balance of the Northeast Asia and the Asia-Pacific region. He also says that North Korea will continue to strengthen its defense as a result. North Korea fired four ballistic missiles earlier this month that landed in the Sea of Japan. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is calling for a new approach towards North Korea. He spoke in Tokyo, ahead of stops in Seoul and Beijing. Tillerson didn't outline a new approach, but says one is needed. The diplomatic and other efforts of the past 20 years to bring North Korea to a point of denuclearization have failed. So we have 20 years of failed approach. Tillerson says it's time for the U.S. to stop throwing money at a solution that's not working. The United States provided $1.35 billion in assistance to North Korea as an encouragement to take a different pathway. That encouragement has been met with further development of nuclear capabilities, more missile launches. Chinese leaders are expected to present their own plan to defuse escalating tensions in the Korean Peninsula. One person was injured after the explosion at the International Monetary Fund offices in Paris. Local news reports say that the explosion might have been caused by a letter bomb. The explosion happened a day after the package containing explosives was found at the German finance ministry. A Greek anti-establishment radical group called Conspiracy of the Cells of Fire claimed responsibility for sending the package to Germany. It is not clear whether the cases in France and Germany are connected. Now let's go to Nathan Hoffman with Sports News. Investigators have determined Miami Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez was the operator of the boat that crashed off Miami Beach last September, killing him and two friends. The 24-year-old's fingerprints and DNA were found on the steering wheel and throttle. Fernandez owned the vessel, which was traveling at 65 miles per hour when it hit a jetty near Miami Beach on September 25th. He had cocaine in his system and was legally drunk. Former President Barack Obama has revealed his March Madness bracket picks. Obama released his picks yesterday on Twitter. He picked North Carolina over Duke for the championship. Rounding out his final four bracket is Arizona and Kansas. President Trump has declined to fill out a bracket. And that's what's going on in sports news today. I'm Nathan Hoffman. Miles, back to you. Health and Human Service Secretary Tom Price says that the opioid epidemic has been addressed in an aggressive way. In a town hall, addiction recovery specialist John Brogan asked Price how the administration is going to help people with addictions find a new way in life. Price says that he has laid out three priorities. We're going to do all that we can to put resources and, and uh, research uh, to make certain uh, that we're doing all that we can. First is mental illness, second is childhood obesity, and the third is the opioid crisis. And what we need to do is make certain that we're identifying individuals who are at risk. We need to make certain that we're identifying individuals who are beginning to fall into that, that trap 
and put the resources in place to educate them and make certain that we're showing them a, a, a better way. Price says once people are addicted to opioids, they need treatment, not jail. President Trump may not be loving the message on McDonald's corporate Twitter. His account this morning, the fast food chain criticized Trump and called for Barack Obama's return. The tweet was posted a little after 9 this morning Eastern Time, but was deleted quickly. It was liked and retweeted more than a thousand times before it was taken down. McDonald's claims its account was compromised and says an investigation has been launched. Now to Shannon Osbourne with Entertainment News. Pixar has released the first trailer for its newest film, Coco. This is Pixar's first musical and original film since The Good Dinosaur in 2015. Universal has announced a new Dwayne Johnson action movie. The movie will be named Skyscraper and it is being described as a 3D action thriller. Johnson revealed plans for the movie on Instagram saying this character is inspired by a disabled U.S. veteran. The actor will produce the film and it will hit theaters next year. And that's what's going on in your entertainment news today. I'm Shannon Osborne. Lauren, back to you. A police chase in San Fernando led to more than three vehicles being hit. The chase began earlier this morning on the 118 highway. The driver of a BMW then left the freeway and traveled more than 100 miles per hour on surface streets. Multiple vehicles that were parked on Roscoe and Etiwanda were struck before the suspect was arrested. Riverside Sheriff's deputies have arrested a man who is trying to impersonate a police officer. The suspect, Johnny Sellers, attempted to pull over a man who he thought was a civilian, but turned out to be a sheriff's deputy. The deputy did not pull over and instead called local authorities. Sellers is due in court May 5th. Two newborns were abandoned in the San Fernando Valley. A boy was surrendered in Tarzana and a girl in Northridge through the L.A. County's Safe Surrender Program. The program lets parents or guardians leave a child three days old or younger at any hospital or fire station with no questions asked. A man who spent 32 years in prison for murder will be released in Los Angeles later today. L.A. prosecutors agreed that Andrew Wilson did not get a fair trial when he was convicted of robbery and murder in 1986. Wilson was convicted based on eyewitnesses and no physical evidence ever connected him to his crime. Now 62, Wilson plans on visiting his mother who turns 97 in May. A major snowstorm has swept the northeast. The storm is moving from New York into Canada. More than 30 inches of snow was recorded in parts of upstate New York, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut. Flights were canceled, schools were closed, and highway travel was banned due to icy roads. Five weather-related deaths were reported. One involved a 10-year-old boy in upstate New York who died after being trapped under a pile of snow. I think it's terrible. I mean, um, I remember as kids when we would go out and play, how easy it could be um, for something to ever happen, but you don't think about it. A blizzard warning remains in full effect. Now let's go to Kelsey Henderson with the weather. It's a beautiful day out here in Northridge. Right now the highs are currently in the high 70s, but we are expected to hit the mid 60s later this evening. Right now the beaches are in the mid 60s and in the Inland Empire it's about 80 degrees. But the sunshine is not going to last long. Rain is in the forecast. It's expected to start raining the beginning of next week. That's it for weather. I'm Kelsey Henderson. Miles, back to you in the studio. A juicy burger has been sold at a charity auction in Dubai for $10,000. The giant burger contains seven beef patties, one for each of the Emirates of the United Arab Emirates. It also has aged cheddar cheese and veal bacon strips in a saffron brioche bun. The founder of Dubai Lifestyle magazine, Villa 88, made the winning bid. The auction was run by Pink Caravan, which raises awareness for breast cancer. Western Bagel is getting festive for St. Patrick's Day. The chain is offering green bagels and cream cheese to celebrate the holiday. They're now on sale until tomorrow, March 17th. Western Bagel first started offering St. Patrick's Day bagels in 1986 at its Woodland Hills, Van Nuys, and Westlake locations. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Lauren Tenner Dunn. And I'm Miles Spencer. Hello and welcome to On Point. I'm Lauren Turner Dunn. In the last few months, society has witnessed a number of natural disasters, from hurricanes and floods to earthquakes and fires. In the past 20 years, 600,000 people worldwide died in natural disasters. Hurricane Harvey caused about $30 billion in damage, and almost 400 people were killed in the earthquake in Mexico. 
In 1994, a 6.7 earthquake hit Northridge and killed 57 people. Earthquake experts say a big one is on its way to shake LA and everyone needs to be prepared. On Point spoke to some CSUN students and many of them say they are prepared for a natural disaster, but others are not so sure. It's time for us to prepare and I think after all the current situations, uh, we're going to start doing all the preparation already. Well, my brother's in the military, so he has MREs all over the place, and we have, like, supplies that we would need. Well, I mean, I guess I have the, the basics. I mean, I'm always stocked in water because, I mean, we always drink water. But, I mean, I don't have, like, a first aid kit or stuff like that, you know. We need to be prepared for this because I feel like most of us here on campus, we talk about being prepared, but we're not really prepared. We don't talk to our families about this could happen to us. So I do have kits in my house and in my car. I live in Topinga Canyon, so in the case that there is an earthquake, my family and I are already ready to get down. I also feel that we need to prepare as much as possible, start gathering camp food and water. In all honesty, I probably am not prepared personally. So. We should be expecting an earthquake pretty soon. I mean, after all this stuff that's going on, you know, I feel like California is going to have something coming. In any case, Californians have to help each other when the big one comes. Neighbors perform an average of 70% of all rescues in major disasters, but there are preparations people can make, and there are first responders such as the Red Cross and the emergency management teams who will provide relief services. On Point's Catherine Molina has more on the story. Thank you. Now joining us we have Guillermo Sanchez. He's a preparedness manager at the Red Cross Los Angeles region. And then we have Lisa Curtis, CSUN Emergency Manager. And I'd like to thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Now with what's going on in the world, let's go to the Digital Media Center with our international reporter, Heather Ann Wagner. Vice President Mike Pence says the United States is open to direct talks with North Korea. He said this after returning home from the Olympics in South Korea. Meanwhile, for the third time in history, they could hold bilateral talks. The two Koreas have found a renewed dialogue after unifying for the Olympic Games. Some see the talks as a positive step to ease tension in the peninsula and the world. President Moon Jae-in really want to have Pyeongchang Olympic peaceful, but his ultimate task is how to transform peaceful Olympic into lasting Olympic peace. Formal dates for meetings are yet to be decided. But a unified Korea isn't welcomed by all. Protesters in South Korea took to the streets, voicing outrage over a North and South Union. Oh, I'm very angry. No, I'm upset. Oh, I want America demolish the North Korea before the Moon Jae in, uh, before the visit of North Korea. With growing tension and a nuclear threat, protests have become increasingly violent. We wait the Winter Olympics for 20 years. But uh, this. Uh, the Moon's uh, regime invite uh, North Korea to make uh, unific unification teams. So, for what? So we are all folks angry for that. Protests are expected to continue during the Olympics. Brexit negotiations continue with representatives from Ireland and the United Kingdom. The two hope to come to an agreement on shared territories. Without an agreement in place, Ireland could close its borders. The talks have been at a standstill for a year, but both sides hope to reach an agreement this week. The UK is set to leave the European Union in March of 2019. British Prime Minister Theresa May is meeting with leaders trying to hammer out details. Without anything in place, the UK may have to form its own trading bloc. That places them in a weaker position. The EU and UK have eight months left to come to a full agreement. That's it for International News. I'm Heather Ann Wagner. Back to you in the studio.